السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس کلیگس اینڈ دا ویورس آئی ویلکم یو ود ان دس فرائیڈے سیریز آن لائن ٹاک پرسسٹنٹلی ایکسیپٹ مائی بکے آف بیرڈکشنس لو اینڈ کمنڈیشنس مے اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ بلس آل آف یو لیٹ می ریکیپچولیٹ یو پیپل واٹ آئی ہیو ڈسکسڈ ود یو ود ان دس لیکچر فسٹ دیٹ واز ریگارڈنگ دا فیڈرلزم دا کنسیپٹ آف فیڈرلزم ان وچ آئی ٹرائی ٹو ڈیفائن دا ورڈ فیڈرلزم اینڈ ود دا اسپیشل فیچرس آف فیڈرلزم ایز ویل لیٹ می ٹوڈے ٹاک اباؤٹ دا انڈین فیڈرلزم دا نیچر آف انڈین فیڈرلزم ہاؤ انڈیا از اے فیڈرل کنٹری اینڈ ہاؤ دا فیڈرل اسٹرکچر آف انڈیا ورکس سو بفور آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو جمپ ٹو ڈسکس دا کانسیپٹ آف انڈین فیڈرلزم لیٹ می ٹاک ہیئر دا واٹ واز اے نیڈ اینڈ دا سبجیکٹ میٹر فار اسٹیبلشنگ انڈیا دا فیڈرل ان نیچر If we are having the uh, brief historical look uh, towards the nature or, and, and the formation of India as a country after this uh, partition 1947. Uh, so, so the India as a, as a state or as a country, heterogeneous in nature, a lot of heterogeneity we, we, we feel in India, a lot of diversity, a lot of variations as well. If you talk about the, the, the population point of view, uh, as per the current estimation of it is 135.26 crore population of India, a huge population of the chair i must say and if you talk about within the context of the language there are almost 279 languages uh, plus 544 dialectics in india and if you talk about the religion point of view it is a home of almost nine religions uh, so uh, taking the religion under consideration the dialectics the uh, languages and the population in consideration so there are a lot of variations in india so that's why the with the need was felt to have this uh, threefold Uh, distribution of the powers among the uh, center and the states. Uh, so dear students, let me talk here one by one. Uh, the moment there was a need to divide the power between the center and the states, what we simply call the federalism as this, this, um, the pictorial view on the screen also reflects that there is some sort of cooperation uh, where, where the uh, powers uh, are joined, there are people are uh, the joining hands, the governments are joining hands uh, to run the country smoothly here on the screen. Uh, so the, there is a threefold distribution of the powers among the center and the states. And the first of uh, these three lists has been uh, categorized by the Constitution of India constitutionally as well. Uh, so the first comes the union list. Uh, that, that's the union list here. Uh, so union list means uh, all those powers uh, which, are, which, we lie, which lie within the ambit of the uh, central government and uh, they can make the central government can make the law and those very laws uh, will be implemented uh, through over the whole country plus the union territories and the, uh, other, the states of India as well. The, the, the number of the laws are there 100 items in nature. So on 100 items the union government can make the law. Uh, let, let me to, um, call them one by one. It, it, it includes the defense. Uh, it, talk, uh, it talks about the banking system, the foreign affairs. It talks about the cu- currency uh, and the defense as well. So uh, among these items, the union government or we can say central government can make the law and all those laws will be implemented whole, through the whole India. Then comes the, the state list. Within the state list, there are 61 items, uh, at least 61 items. And within the 61 items, the state government is supreme and the paramount Uh, separately to make the laws alone. Uh, so this includes the, the, the police sector, trade and commerce, agriculture and irrigation. So these there we can see witness the demarcation line where the union government separately makes the law within the ambit and the state government separately makes the law within their own ambit. Uh, so there is no mingling, there is no, there, there is no cross mingling between the powers. Uh, after that, uh, we can see uh, that the next one that we simply call the concurrent list. That's called the concurrent list. Now, when it comes to this concurrent list, the last one, the concurrent list, where we can see it includes all those subjects, it includes all those subjects of the common interests of both uh, the, the, the union government as well as the state government. So, in here, in the concurrent list, both the central government and, and the state government interests prevails and they can make the law. Let us see in which affairs they can make the law, in which jurisdiction they can make the law. They can make the law within the jurisdiction of the education, foresters, trade unions, marriage adoption and adoption and success. session as well so here the center and the will of the state also prevails but now gentlemen here the question arises if there sometimes the tussle occurs between the center and the states 
Well, which will will prevail? Uh, for example, let me uh, let me tell you if the, the law is made on the education system uh, by the union government, uh, but it, it 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 has it is having the it uh, has ha, it is having the clash with the cent- uh, state government. Ultimately, uh, the will of the central government will prevail. It means that the will of the central government is every time paramount and the sovereign. The state government can be, uh, the the will will be declared null and void by the central government. So, if the number of the items which include within this concurrent list that's uh, almost. 52 in number they are 52 in number so now the question comes all these uh, things uh, lie the moment the constitution of india was framing is any law after the framing of the constitution came into the existence uh, which did we did not lie within, the, within the, both the ambits of state center and the and, and the concurrent listers for example if you talk about example of the computer software certain laws of the cyber laws uh, because at the particular moment of uh, the framing of the constitution in 1950 uh, the, the concept was not uh, the software uh, concept was not available so here the, the central government is enjoying all those discretionary powers to frame the law within that very Severe. Uh, the state government is bound to accept all those laws. So somewhere that those discretionary powers are enjoyed by the central government, where uh, the, the hand of the central government is up, upper in nature. Uh, so, dear students. Now, when you talk about the states, uh, which are 29 in number, and you talk about the small uh, part of the land of India, uh, that that's all also sovereign, like we talk about Chandigarh, we talk about Lakshadweep, you talk about the capital city of Delhi, which are the union, uh, we, we call them the union territories, UTs, and the Jumma and Kashmir present as well. Uh, so, so what happens to them? Definitely, these there is no state government. Uh, they, de- de- they directly come into the existence. They directly come into the umbrella and the ambit of the central government, and the laws of the central government prevails there wholly and solely. But this to, to analyze and to, to observe the central state relations, how central and state state relation is balanced. Uh, persistently, the government of India, they are the framing the, the, the commissions. Which you let's have a look on the screen. There is a one I am going to talk here about the one commission that is called. The Sarkaria Commission. This commission was established by, by the government of India in June 1983 under the uh, under the person namely Justice R. Sarkaria. So there was a man namely Justice R. Sarkaria. Uh, he was uh, the, in, the, in charge of the commission to review the relations between the centre and the states. Uh, so the sub, uh, Sarkaria Commission uh, submitted its report on January 1998 uh, 1988 after the five years, so uh, it, it gave 247 recommendations. So all these 247 recommendations uh, reviews uh, the relation between the centre and the states, while the centre is not overriding uh, the states and the state government is not doing something that hurts the sentiments and the failings of the centre. So maintain this harmony, maintains equilibrium within the India, uh, within, within the land of heterogeneity and the land of diversity. We are having this uh, the concept of federalism that every time uh, could. Uh, is in search of the maintain the peace and the harmony within the country. Um, so this was a brief ab- about the nature and the how what makes India a federal country actually. Uh, so within the coming lectures, we are also going to talk about the how this federalism is now practiced. Till then, take care and Allah Hafiz.